This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. So, having a look at the ratios for performance, liquidity, and working capital, or your efficiency ratios, we're now going to go through and pull that together with a past exam question. Admittedly, the past exam question is from the old syllabus, but I do think it's important to practice some of these older exam style questions to help you understand firstly the calculations of ratios which, which is pretty straightforward but also being able to analyze what the ratio is telling you and sometimes particularly here not to just think about the ratio itself but maybe analyze it a little bit deeper and think around it but it's good to help you understand and generate more issues or more reasons as to why ratios may lose okay and I really like this question. It was a question for, for 10 marks. Uh, again, that means nothing to you now, but for me it does. Uh, it was an old question for, for 10 marks. And what it wanted you to do was it wanted you to analyze the performance and working capital position of SAS or SAF, including the calculation of five relevant ratios. So. It used to be that you got one mark per pair of ratios, okay? Uh, so what people did is they looked at the performance and automatically thought, right, I need some performance ratios. Uh, you know, you weren't told what to calculate. You've got it lucky. The question will say, calculate gross profit margin, calculate return on capital employed. Uh, here, I think the only thing that you can calculate essentially is uh, to do with your performance, so to speak is if you're given is it revenue and cost of sales uh, you could work out the gross profit and you could go through there couldn't you and work out your gross profit margin okay uh, i don't think that should cause you any great difficulty i'll allow you to do it uh, on your own steam work out the gross profit by taking the revenue less the cost of sales Divide that by the revenue should give you your gross profit margin. If you can't do that, then I am severely worried. Okay, uh, do it for the left hand column and the right hand column. Uh, working capital. Uh, well, you're thinking about inventory days, receivable days, payable days. This caught out so many people. Okay, uh, because what you've got is everybody just jumped at it and thought right working capital inventory days receivable days payable days you know remember when you go through there and do is it any form of question uh you go through there when you're thinking about working capital you go through there don't you and say right i take my statement of financial position figure i divide it by my statement of profit or loss and I multiply it by 365 days, okay? That's what everybody did, okay? So for the inventory, uh, they took your inventory, is it of 1220 at the period end of the SFP, and divided that by your cost of sales, uh, and multiplied by 365. So when you're going through that, and looking at your inventory, the cost of sales figure was 1220. Uh, the cost of sales figure was 2420. Uh, and they multiplied it, didn't they, by 365. How many marks did they get? Nothing. Absolutely zilch. De nada. Zero. So, why? And the reason why is because these results are for six months. Oh, it was brilliant from the examiner. Hat off to the examiner on that one. I thought it was fantastic because you're looking at a six month period. So what you need to go through and do is when you've worked out your inventory days, that being the inventory days for a 12 month period, isn't it? Here, what you need to go through and do there is you need to multiply the 365 by half to take account of the fact that it is half a year, which is 182.5 days. So if you like, six twelfths, okay. Oh, 
that was nasty, wasn't it? So you needed to multiply, is it, by the 182.5, can be. If I tap that onto my calculator, I think I got, was it, 92 days? And if you were to do it for the previous year, or I say previous six months, you should have gone through there, shouldn't you? And got 80, 58 days, okay? That was so, 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 so nasty tricky, okay? It really was tricky. And that would have thrown everybody. And that meant they would have lost the mark for inventory days, receivable days, and payable days. Ouch. Okay. Uh, again, for the receivables, you take, is it the 1715 sales, divided by the revenue, 3100, and multiply it by 182.5. And likewise as well for your payables, because you have your payables there, it's 1190, isn't it? Uh, divided by your cost of sales. Admittedly, we'd like to divide it by your credit purchases, but we'll just divide it by your cost of sales. It's financial accounting, I'm not worried about that, that management accounting. Uh, that you see in all the other papers okay so hopefully that shouldn't have caused you any more difficulty now if it was to be seen into the future so i'll allow you to go through there and work out the inventory days receivable days and payable days it's not too difficult uh you've also worked out the gross margin uh other ratio that you could calculate based upon the information given is your current ratio isn't it which is your current assets divided by your current liabilities uh, here again you just need to be a little bit careful don't we because inventory and receivables they are current assets so you have the current assets of inventory and receivables for that first and that second six month period in the previous six month period you had a cash asset didn't we uh, cash and cash equivalents and then what you have there is your payables are a current liability and a current liability. But what you need to be careful of is that in that second six month period, the borrowings constitute a current liability, isn't it? OK, so when you're looking at your figures, it's these current assets divided by these current liabilities. And then in the previous six months, it is these current assets divided by this current liability okay if you wanted to i wouldn't have recommended it in the exam because by now you should have five ratios pre-working capital gross margin and your current ratio uh you, you could if you wanted calculate your quick ratio removing any inventory but i'm not too fussed about that okay uh what i suppose it is more important isn't it is the analysis so when you're going through there and thinking about the analysis, uh, what you can see initially, if you think about the gross margin, is that you've got, is it an increase in sales? And when you look at your gross profit margin, when you calculate it, you have a reduction in your gross margin, don't we? Okay. So obviously you need to calculate that gross margin. Hopefully you've done that. It was a nice, simple figure, wasn't it? Uh, and find that it's fallen. Uh, and you can also see as well that your sales have increased. So an increase in sales, but a reduction in the margin, isn't it? Okay. Uh, why is that? Well, to use the background information, there has been a period of rapid expansion in the last six months with the launch of a new product. Okay. So you need to think the, the increase in sales why has that then given me a reduction? Is it in my gross profit margin? Uh, well, the increase in sales essentially isn't it is because we have launched a new product. That's what you would expect with that increase in sales. Uh, but what you then need to consider is why has that reduced your gross margin? Well, gross margin will have gone down, won't it? Uh, if you have gone through that and decided to sell some new lower margin products. Okay, if you've introduced a new product, it doesn't say specifically what it is within the question. Maybe it is a lower margin product. Okay. Uh, the other situation that you can go through and think about is potentially uh, what you may have done uh, is 
for the margin to go down either your cost per unit goes up or your selling price per unit goes down doesn't it so maybe there has been a reduction in your selling price per unit and the reason why you've reduced the selling price per unit is because you want to increase the volume now that's what a lot of these low cost air time companies do isn't it they reduce their selling price to try and increase the volume now you're more likely to go on holiday aren't you with a low cost airline if it is cheaper okay uh, has the effect of increasing the sales but it might go through there and reduce the gross profit margins i think both of those are mentioned in the model answer the other one that i suppose you could have gone through and spoken about is maybe that there has been uh, potentially increased it in the cost per unit okay so maybe uh, there's been maybe an increase in the materials cost uh, because the new product is maybe a little bit more technologically advanced and it requires more uh, expensive materials uh, or maybe there could be a, a new machine that you use that has increased depreciation that, that has got an increased cost therefore per unit okay but key bit about anything to do with your gross profit margin falling is coming back to those situations there isn't it which i think we touched upon some of them a little bit earlier on okay uh, if we go through then and think about is it your working capital uh, and your liquidity if you like your, your current ratio then what you found i think there with regards to your inventory days is that there was an increase in your inventory days wasn't it uh, again the question there is why would there be an increase in inventory days well again it comes back to the fact doesn't it that you have launched a new product and if you go through that and launch a new product what you will go through and do there is that you will increase won't you your production you increase the production to meet the demand of that new product don't you okay uh the increase that we have if we go back uh, a couple of pages was 58 to 92 days so it's an extra month uh, it wouldn't give me too much concern in the, the, the short term okay uh, you would hope that as the product becomes more successful and you manage the production better hopefully that would come down over time okay but you would expect a brief increase in those inventory days uh, what you also see is i think that there is an increase is there in your receivable days uh, if you go through and look at the numbers i think it is from is it 72 days if you worked it correctly uh, up to was it 101 days again you need to ask yourself the question why okay uh hmm. well you know that's a bit of a concern i'd have thought isn't there you know 72 days is approximately two months isn't it and that's now approximately three months okay uh so what you've got there again it's going to come down to the new product isn't it you know the, the the simple thing that you could think of is essentially maybe you have could it be new customers and if you have new customers therefore you have gone through and offered new terms but you know again that that's just a little bit excessive isn't it you've, you've given them what is it another 20 29 days only an extra month isn't it so that would be a little bit of a concern uh it could be that maybe there are some credit control issues and the reason why there are credit control issues is maybe just because of the sheer the sheer volume of sales wasn't there okay there was, there was quite a considerable increase in the six months another 1.1 million you know, you've got an extra 50 percent of sales so therefore that might create a bit of credit control problems but i think my biggest concern would be here in the fact that it's 101 days okay uh, have a look at what you've got within your payable days 
if you go through there and think about your your payable days if i can write days instead of pays apologies if you go through and think about your payable days i think they've gone through is it from 73 up to 90 days so what we're doing is we're taking advantage of our credit terms aren't we and extending it a little bit so using our supplier as a form of finance which is a risky strategy in itself and also i'm actually paying my suppliers quicker than what i received in the cash from my customers so what you've got there i think that the big concern there would be your liquidity issues you know particularly if your inventory doesn't start to sell you know you then need to start reducing the price of your inventory to get the sale that reduces your profitability so you do need to make sure here that you do focus on uh, managing that working capital before it gets out of control okay it's only been six months since the launch of the new product we don't want to run the risk of any over trading you know by really increasing our sales rapidly but not getting the cash in because that would then lead to potentially you know huge liquidity issues and i think those liquidity issues are heightened aren't they yet further when you go through there and start thinking about your current ratio you may have worked out a quick ratio as well but i'm not bothered you know when you're thinking about the current ratio forget the current ratio i'm not worried about the fact that it's gone from 2.4 to 2 okay uh, it still seems fairly liquid doesn't it the big issue that you've got isn't it in this year is that now you have those short term borrowings okay yeah what you've got isn't it when you think about the ratio you've got a reduction in your current ratio uh, and that's a reduction is it to two so you still have uh, an excess of assets over liabilities but if you forget the ratios and just look at cash we ain't got none we got no cash whatsoever so therefore we've got a bit of an issue haven't we okay we are now overdrawn if the bank was to call in that overdraft we could be getting into a bit of financial difficulty okay so we need to make sure that overdraft facility is secure and that we are going to generate the cash from our customers to ensure that it starts to get paid off because if not we are beginning to run the risk of over trading so there needs to be some serious issue uh, in terms of how we deal with this working capital cycle uh, and make sure it gets corrected because if not this new product launch which has been great in terms of profitability and in terms of sales uh, might not have the desired effect on our cash position of the business okay so it's not just about looking at ratios in isolation uh, it's about combining them you know we've compared the payables and we've looked at the receivables uh, we've looked at the increase in sales compared to the gross profit margin uh, we've looked at the working capital cycle in its entirety to think about how that's impacted your cash and impacted then your current ratio okay so so do just be very careful uh if you can do try and practice some of the older questions that you've got we'll put some with, within the class notes to help you along uh some of them will be in some of the revision kits and, and practice question banks in some of the tuition providers uh remember it's not just about calculating the ratios that should be easy unless it's for six months uh it's all about the interpretation and that's the bit that's going to take a little bit of time and i think they could be some of the tougher questions that are set within the exam because it's likely to be these select all type of questions and you either need to select too few or too many and you get the question wrong so keep working hard and keep up the question practice